Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is sublingual space infection. Let's discuss the gist of the topic. First is the boundaries of sublingual space and then the content of sublingual space and what are the teeth involved in the sublingual space infection and the muscle related to the sublingual space and then the neighboring spaces of the sublingual space what are the clinical features of sublingual space infection and the source of infection of the sublingual space infection and the treatment of the sublingual space infection these are the headings we are going to deal with First, let us see the boundaries of the sublingual space. Have a look at this diagram. Now, this is the buccinator muscle. And then, this will be the platysma. This is the mylohyoid muscle This is the sublingual gland This will be your submandibular gland The tongue is present here and this space is the sublingual space. Alright. Now let's see the boundaries of this sublingual space. Anteriorly what you have? This is the sublingual space. Anteriorly you have this mandible. That is anteriorly you have the medial aspect of mandible. Anteriorly, medial aspect of mandible. Now, posteriorly what do you have? This is posteriorly, posterior side. And this posteriorly you will be having your submandibular gland. Posteriorly you will be having your medial portion of Submandibular gland as well as your superior and posterior portion is also present. Anteriorly, you will be having the medial aspect of mandible, posteriorly, the medial portion of submandibular gland, medial, superior, and posterior portion of the submandibular gland. Now, medially what do you have? Medially, you will be having your muscles of tongue. Here it will be. Medially, you will be having the muscles of tongue. What muscles? Intrinsic muscles of tongue will be present. What are the intrinsic muscles? That includes hypoglossus, genioglossus, and geniohyoid. These three intrinsic muscles will be present medially. Now, what is present laterally? Laterally, again, you will be having this medial aspect of mandible. Now if you see laterally and anteriorly same the medial aspect of mandible. Let's move on to superior and inferior aspect. Superiorly what you have here. Superiorly you will be having your mucosa floor of the mouth. Here is the tongue and here will be the mucosa of floor of the mouth. Now 
Now, what is present on the inferior aspect? Inferiorly, you have mylohyoid muscle. This is the most important muscle you have to remember in which this separates the sublingual and submandibular space. This is the important muscle you have to remember. This is present to the inferior side of the sublingual space. Anteriorly, you will have the medial aspect of mandible. Posteriorly, you will have the medial superior posterior portion of submandibular gland. And medially, you have the muscles of tongue, that is the intrinsic muscles includes hypoglossus, genioglossus and geniohyoid. Laterally, you will have the medial aspect of mandible. Superiorly, the mucosa or floor of the mouth. And inferiorly, you will have the mylohyoid muscle. These are the boundaries of sublingual space infection. Now, mylohyoid muscle is the most important muscle. Why it is so? Because if the infected tooth apex is above the mylohyoid muscle, then it will be the sublingual space infection. And if the infected tooth apex will be below the mylohyoid muscle, then it will be submandibular space infection. So, this is the muscle that separates the sublingual space and the submandibular space. That's why this is the important muscle to remember. Now, the boundaries of the sublingual space is done. Let's see about the content of the sublingual space. What are the contents present? First, you have the deeper part of submandibular gland and sublingual gland and you have to tell about their ducts also. The submandibular gland duct is the Wharton's duct, isn't it? Wharton's duct and sublingual gland duct is the duct of Rivinus. And you have the lingual nerve. These are the two contents present in the sublingual space. One is the deeper part of submandibular gland and sublingual gland. And also their ducts, that is Wharton's duct, that is submandibular duct. And duct of Rivinus, that is the sublingual duct. And the second one is the lingual nerve. These are the two important contents present in the sublingual space. Now, what are the teeth involved? The teeth involved in the sublingual space infection is that, Mandibular premolars, mandibular premolars and also mandibular molars. Infection from this can cause the sublingual space infection. Next, coming to the muscle related. The most important muscle is, you already know, that is mylohyoid muscle. As I have told before, it is the important muscle which separates the sublingual and the submandibular space. If the infected tooth apex is above the mylohyoid muscle, then it will be your sublingual space infection and if it the infected tooth apex is below the mylohyoid muscle, then it will be your submandibular space infection. The muscle related is the mylohyoid muscle. Alright? Now, moving on to the neighboring spaces. You already know it will be 
submandibular space and lateral pharyngeal space. What are the spaces near to the sublingual space you can mention here. Now moving on to the source of infection. What are the source of infection? It may be due to infection from where the mandibular, premolar or molar region. Infection from the mandibular, premolar or molar region that is the infected root apex is above the mylohyoid muscle. This is the source of infection where it causes the sublingual space infection. That's about source of infection. We have discussed about the contents. You have to mention the two important contents that is the deeper part of submandibular gland, sublingual gland and their two ducts. Then the lingual nerve and what are the teeth involved? It is mandibular premolars and mandibular molars. What are the muscle related? That is the mylohyoid muscle, the most important muscle you have to remember. Next coming to the neighboring spaces, two spaces and source of infection you have to mention. Boundaries, content, teeth involved, muscle related, neighboring spaces are done. Next we have to see about the clinical features of the sublingual space infection. What are the clinical features? First clinical feature is there may be swelling. Where the swelling is present may be seen on the anterior part of the floor of the mouth. Anterior part of the floor of the mouth. And the second one is dysphagia. The third one is severe tenderness. And there may be difficulty in speaking. The patient might have difficulty in speaking. And there may be raised tongue. And this might cause airway obstruction. These are the important clinical features. First is the swelling on the anterior part of the floor of the mouth. And then will be the dysphagia. What is dysphagia? It is difficulty in swallowing. And next is the severe tenderness. Then Difficulty in speaking, there may be raised tongue and this might lead to airway obstruction. These are the important clinical features you have to write. Now, moving on to the treatment of sublingual space infection. Treatment is the incision and drainage, the most common treatment of the facial space infections. That is the incision and drainage. You can do it extra orally as well as intra orally. Either extra orally or intra orally. If extra oral approach is done, then transverse skin incision is made. Transverse incision is done between where that is the hyoid bone and inferior border of mandible.
hyoid bone and inferior border of mandible. What is intraoral approach? Intraorally, incision is placed. Intraorally, incision is placed parallel to submandibular duct. Parallel to the submandibular duct and then blunt dissection is made, drain is placed, pus is evacuated and then it is secured with suture. This is the intraoral approach. Treatment, it includes the incision and drainage. You can do it either extraorally or intraorally. Extraorally, transverse incision is done between hyoid bone and inferior border of mandible. Intraorally, incision is placed parallel to the submandibular duct. And then blunt dissection is done. Drain is placed, pus is evacuated and it is secured with suture. This is the treatment of sublingual space infection. Let's just quickly recall what we have covered in this. First, we have covered about the boundaries of the sublingual space infection. And then the content of sublingual space infection. Next, what are the teeth involved in the sublingual space infection? And next is the muscle related to this space and what are the neighboring spaces of this sublingual space the clinical features the source of infection and the treatment of sublingual space infection these are the headings you should write in detail i have just made it easier for you to present in the exam you just have to draw this diagram and write the boundaries it will be simple if you draw the diagram and if you study the boundaries. And that's all about sublingual space infection. If you like the video, hit the like button, share this video and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you.